How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over first order half-life calculations and just like we did in the previous problem the first thing we're going to do is see what it looks like graphed. So if you have say a line like this for your zero or for your I'm sorry your first order half-life down here you'll have time and over here what you're going to have is the natural log of the concentration of A and your y-intercept is going to equal your natural log of a o and then what you're going to have here is slope is negative k so again um, that's just like I said in the, in the previous problem it's significant to know what's going to be on the y-axis for your graphs of first order any kind of calculation because uh, a lot of times the questions will involve graphs or you know they'll just expect you to know what it looks like or even just what would be the the x and the y axis of a graph like this. So here's the half-life equation for first order. 0 0.693 over k. That's the natural log of 2 there and uh, this is really the the simplest form and I, I really like doing the first order half-life because I find it the formula is a lot easier. So here we go. Uh, we'll just jump into the first problem and um, I'll get rid of this for now. Okay. So the first order decomposition of N2O5 takes place at 95 degrees Celsius, where K equals 0 0.42 M per minute. What is the half life and what would be the N2O5 concentration after three minutes starting from N2O5 equals? 0.350 m. So the first way, and so yeah, we're going to start off with our half life. So what we're going to have is our t one half equals 0 0.693 over k. So all we need is k to get the half life for these, which is going to equal 0 0.693 over what we were given, which is 0 0.4 two and then we'll just do that out. okay so what I got was my half-life is equal to 1.65 minutes so right off the bat that's pretty straightforward uh, from there we're gonna do uh, part B here what would be the N205 concentration after three minutes and it gives us what we're gonna start from so this one's going to be a bit more challenging. I'm going to write out what we have here in 205. We're going to take the, the natural log of N205 minus the natural log N205. And then what we're going to do is we'll, that's going to equal KT. Okay, cool. So from there, we can just start plugging things in. We have our natural log of, it's going to be 0 0.350 m minus natural log um, N205, which is what we're solving for, equals our k, which is, we're going to have well, 0 0.42 here. And that's going to be multiplied by three minutes and whenever you're using time in these problems it's good to just make sure you know if these are minutes that the final answer you get is minutes not like seconds or something for example so here we go um, I think one good way to do this is going to be take the negative natural log of N205 over here minus and then what that's going to be is minus 1.05 equals 2.31 and then we'll just add 1.05 to each side plus 1.05 so our natural log our negative natural log of n205 is going to equal our 
2R3.36. And now here's what we can do. We can divide both sides by negative 1. And then here we have just our, let's see if I'm going, I'm starting to go off the page here. We have our natural log of N205. It's going to equal negative 3.6. 3.36, sorry. Okay, cool. So from there, what we're going to do, uh, and this is sometimes tricky depending on what type of calculator you have, we're going to put both to the E. So what we're going to do is we're going to do E of the natural log of N205, which essentially, we're, you know, we're not actually doing a calculation. And over here, we're going to do E to the negative 3.36. And that will get rid of effectively the natural log on this side, so you can isolate. And what you're going to be left with is just plain and simple N205 is going to equal what our answer is, which is 0.0347m. So that's something I think that's kind of like an advanced form of uh, algebra, but yeah, it's not something that everyone picks up, at least on my calculator. I think what I did was here, um, and this is kind of like an older one. I don't know if everyone has this, but 3.36 negative, and then second to the E, and there's where I got my answer. All right, cool. So that is the first problem, and then from there, I think they're gonna really get a little bit more tricky. All right, so here we have a radioactive substance known as kryptonite takes 312 years for 20% of a 5 gram crystal to decay. What is the half life of kryptonite? How long will it take to reduce 3 gram sample to 15%? And what is the rate of decay of a 6 gram sample in grams per year? So, like I said, th these are starting to get a little bit more tricky. Uh, we'll start off with just the half life. So, um, our T half is going to equal. Sorry, 0 0.693, and that's going to be over K. And then our K value is one variable that we're going to have to find. So here's what we're going to do to find K. So to find K, we're going to do since kryptonite's not a real element, I'm just going to put it like that, K-R-Y for kryptonite. Um, and then we're going to have 5.0 grams minus 2 point, I mean, uh, 0 0.2. And then 5.0 equals, and it's just going to be 5 minus 4, so we're going to get 4 grams. So now what we have is the natural log of 5.0 minus the natural log 4.0. It's going to equal K times 312. So we're just using what they gave us. Um, so here we're going to just do that calculation out. Okay, and then we're going to divide both sides by 312. And Okay, cool. So what I'll get is the K value is going to be 7.15 times 10 to the negative fourth years to the negative one. So now we'll just plug that right into here. And that our T one half is going to equal nine six nine point two three years all right great so we found the half-life now it says part b how long will it take to reduce a three gram sample to 15 percent so i'm just going to kind of separate off this area here and then we'll work over here okay so how long will it take to reduce a three gram sample so here's what we're going to start with kry 
is equal to 0 0.15 because we're looking for 15% of 3 grams. Zero point four five grams, so that's that's our number to work with, sort of. So now we're going to do the natural log of three point zero grams, is then minus natural log of zero point four five grams, and then that's going to equal kT, and here's what we got. Okay, so here's what I ended up with. 1.897 divided by 7.15 times 10 to the negative fourth. Y and minus 1. And then we're just going to do that division out. Okay, so what I got was 2653.3 years. Okay, so that's how long it's going to take to reduce the 3 gram sample to 15%. So then finally we'll do part C. What is the rate of decay of a 6 gram sample uh, in grams per year? Okay, so we'll just go rate equals K times KRY 0, 1. And then what we're going to say is our rate is equal to 7.15 times 10 to the negative fourth y minus one. And then we're talking about a six gram sample. All right, so we're gonna get 4.29 times 10 to the negative three grams per year. All right, great, so that was kryptonite. And now we're gonna move on to our last problem, number three here. And this, I think, will probably work out to be the, the most challenging one of all. All right, just line this up here. Too much room I got. Okay, vibranium hypoxide is a radioactive byproduct of rapidly oxidized vibranium metal. The half-life of vibranium hypoxide is 1,050 years. Now A, with a fifth, with, I'm sorry, with a five gram sample, how much will remain after 3,000 years? And then B, how long will it take for 80% of the 5 gram sample to decay? All right, so let's just jump in with what we're going to start with here. Our, our half-life is, is what we're going to need. So our T1 half is going to be equal to 1050 years, which is going to equal 0.693 over k. So you see what we're doing there. We're, we're using the half-life formula with our half-life and then we're going to use that to get our k value. So um, what we're going to end up doing is equals um, really this is just going to be 1050 times k divided by 1050 is equal to our 0. 693 divided by 1050. And okay, looks like our K value is going to be 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth. So now we got that, we got our K value. Now we can start moving forward. We have our natural log and um, Vibranium hypoxide is obviously something I've made up, so we're just going to have, uh, that's going to be our formula, VBO7, H minus, um, T is equal to, and, in, and basically what this would be here is um, T. That's what, what is going to be the, the concentration at a specific time. It's going to equal our natural log of 5.0 grams minus 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 4, or 10 to the negative 4, and then we know that it's 3,000 years, so times 3,000 years. 
Now we're just going to solve this out. Okay, so what we're going to have here is natural log of VBO7 H minus um, T is equal to negative 0 0.371. And then what we're going to do is like we did in the previous one, we're trying to get rid of the natural log. So we'll raise both sides to the E. So it's going to be E um, LN of VB 7 H minus T is equal to the E of zero, negative 0 0.371. Sorry, that got kind of messy there. All right, cool. So what we're gonna get is the concentration of VB 7 H minus T is equal to going to be 0 0.69 and that's going to be grams. All right, cool. So we're through with that. Now we can move on. Um, so for for part B, how long will it take for 80% of the 5 gram sample to decay? So what are we looking for? When So when 80% decays, that means 20% remains. And this is an important distinction here because it, it really it weighs heavily into what we're going to multiply by in the equation. And then, you know, you, you likely could be misled and you could put it in wrong and then get a really way different answer. So how long will it take for 80% of the 5 gram sample to decay? And we're just finding 20% of 5, which is the result that we're going to have just 1 gram after 80, it's been reduced by 80% essentially. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the natural log of one, 1.0 gram is equal to the natural log of 5.0 grams minus our, it's gonna be our 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative four from up there times T. All right, cool. So then what we can do is, first things first, the natural log of one, I think should be zero. And that's negative 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth T plus, and we have 1.609. And then we have, we'll just move that over, negative 1.609 is equal to negative 6.6 .6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth t. And now all we're gonna do is just divide both sides by negative 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then I'll... All right, so we got our t is gonna equal 2,438.54 years. So there you have it. I tried to go over the, the two main types of problems, but basically solving f uh, for the half-life and then using the half-life to find the K and then using the K to find something else. So um, that, that's that for first order. Uh, hopefully this video wasn't too long. And then here again, I just wanted to, to recap on that, on that graph there. Um, it's important to know that whenever you're graphing the half, like a first order reaction, that's gonna be half-life. It's gonna be the natural log of the concentration of A as opposed to what's, what it is for zero order and what it is for second order. So yeah, hopefully this helps someone.